Eric Backer here, the naturopath from way down the bottom of the planet, basically down in New Zealand, where it's getting cold now. It's cool. I've got a merino one at the moment, like a woolen kind of a, a top, and it's nice and cozy. Now, how much omega-3 for depression? Now, if I'd made that statement when I just qualified, you know, back in the 80s, I would have been shot down in flames. I would have been told I was an ultimate quack, because here I am now recommending uh, oil from a fish for people with a mood disorder. Get out of here. Go to the psychiatric unit. You need to get your head examined because you're a nut job. That's what I would have been told in the 80s. <clears throat> okay? That's what I would have been told. I was a nutter. I was making false claims. I was giving people false hope and all this sort of stuff. I knew a long time ago that omega-3 had very good effects on people with mood disorders because I read about it in books like some of these old books up the back here. People have known for over 100 years that omega-3 has an effect on cognition, but it wasn't until 1998, actually the year I came to New Zealand, and Google was a startup back then. Do you remember Google? It started up in 98. That's when a study got published that changed a lot of things. I'll just read out my script. I can still remember the news when it hit the media regarding the potential for omega-3 fish oil and depression. It was 1998, the year I moved to New Zealand. The study was published in the Journal of Affective Disorders. Um, significant event, Google startup too. Researchers discovered to their surprise that patients with depression were consistently exhibiting very low, low to very low levels of red blood cell essential fatty acids, EPA and DHA. So this is when they started to take a lot more attention, pay attention to the omega-3 index, to actually look into the red blood cell to see what the levels, what the ratios were and what the healthy levels you know, should be, the percentage. So remember, a lot of Americans are below 4%, you know, 3 4%, where ideally you want to be up around the 8 9%. We know that now, but had I again said that back then, I would have been in some loony bin for sure. The following year, in 1999, a study was published in the Archives of General Psychiatry involving 30 depressive patients taking omega-3 supplements on a daily basis. An incredible 64% of participants who took 10,000 milligrams for 16 weeks reported marked improvements in their depression. Not improvements, but marked improvements. In this group, uh, sorry, in the group who took placebo for the same period, only 19% experienced any kind of improvement at all. Studies have since found that countries where people consume the highest amount of omega-3 have a tendency to have the lowest rates of depression. All right and the countries with the lowest levels of omega-3 tend to have the highest rates of mental health problems. Now remember also, you'll remember that in countries with high levels of fish consumption, there'll be low levels of omega-6, those shitty crappy seed oils that people love to eat so much, canola oil, and everything deep fried in these seed oils. So these are omega-6, so these are pro-inflammatory. So the country with the highest omega-6 intake it's likely got you know some of the highest depression and mental health problems. Look at America, look at Australia, countries like that. Look at many European countries now with seriously high suicide rates, murder rates, you know, crazy head rates. You can't say it's all because of omega-6, but if you look at countries where they eat tons of omega-3, you tend to have a lot less of this problem going on. Right? There are also studies now emerging that have shown that regular omega-3 supplementation helps support people even with bipolar disorder. There are only very few effective treatment solutions for bipolar, and they are generally in the form of strong pharmaceutical drugs. It makes very good sense for anyone with bipolar disorder to remain on 6,000 milligrams per day for six to 12 months, because the research now validates this. So we can now say that omega-3 helps to treat depression. We can actually say it now, all right? So what is making omega-3 so effective for people who've got depressive disorders. Researchers discovered that omega-3 makes up part of the cell membrane of just about every cell in the entire human body. It was also discovered that omega, um, healthy omega cellular membrane allows for serotonin, the antidepressive hormone, to travel easily from one cell to another, a lot easier in fact. A research is still being conducted on the exact mechanism of this serotonin transport. But so far, um, it has been determined that omega-3 has a very powerful effect on serotonin in both the gut and in the brain. 
uh, then I go on talking in my script here about how, in, particularly in the USA and in, in industrialized countries, our omega-6 has just really taken off. And um, of course, people are eating a lot less omega-3, cost-wise as well, I suppose, comes into it. So for those people with depression, I recommend 3,000 milligrams per day, ongoing for six to 12 months. And once you get used to the omega-3, you could step it up after three months to six capsules per day, again for three months and back off just to get that level into the body. Be sure to take digestive enzymes and probiotics when you're taking the omega-3. You'll just get a better outcome, a better uptake, I believe. Thanks for tuning in.